What is going on, guys? We are back playing some more Surviving with Rotary Craft. And today, guys, we're actually going to be jumping back into Reactor Craft. So I did do an episode on this before, but today we're going to be kind of pivoting a little bit, and we're going to be working with the power generation forms of Reactor Craft. So this might be a little bit confusing through the order in which I set this up, but today we're going to be working on this portion of it. If we go into the Reactor Craft Handbook, click on Power Generation Machines, we're going to be using a lot of these machines specifically to set up a steam turbine. Now, this is an extremely expensive setup. Uh, I would liken it to that of a Prius because the more you put in initially, the more turbines you make, the more effective it's going to be. So you're putting in more up front, but you're getting more out in the long run when you're putting steam into this setup. So what I'm about to craft is not required, but I would recommend it if you want to get the most out of this system because you're able to use more than one turbine and the more that you put on there up to a total of five, the more effective it's going to be. So I am going to cover that a lot more in detail once we start constructing it, but I just want to let you guys know that when I'm about to click on this chest and open it up and you're going to see a ton of steel in there, you do not need to worry. You don't need that necessarily, but it is advised. So open up this chest. You can see there's a lot in here. Majority of where the steel is going and pretty much all the work is going is right here. So this is going to be solely to make these turbines. We're going to be making five of them. And so you're going to require a lot of sintered tungsten ingots, tungsten carbide ingots, uh, then a lot of steel. And I, it would cost even more if I, or, well, it would cost the same, but it would be a ton more steel in here if I actually wanted to craft these turbines. But I thought that I would just speed up the process a little bit since we've already crafted turbines like this a lot. And I would just save the rest for actually crafting this specific reactor craft turbine. The rest of this stuff is just going to be some miscellaneous items that we're going to be using around the turbine to kind of get the whole process rolling. So I guess we can craft all those turbines first and get that out of the way. Uh, so like I said, these are really expensive, mainly just because of the propeller blades. So we can craft these right now. Oh, that is just phenomenal. Okay, so we'll craft them like, is it like that? Oh, you know what? These definitely don't get crafted in the work table. That's probably why we were having the issue. There we go. Okay, so 40 propeller blades for making five of these. Uh, do we craft? We don't craft any of this in there. Okay, so we'll go back in here and we will go down and craft the compound turbine, which we're going to be making five of those. They do require shaft cores, the turbines, and then the sintered tungsten ingots. And then we are going to make the regular turbine, or we're going to make the uh, steam turbine core, which is going to take the tungsten carbide ingots. So we're gonna get that, and then we can finally come back over here and we can make the actual turbine. So we got five of these, and I always hate this because you can never shift click on it, but uh, so we got five of those. Uh, like I said, you're gonna be able to use between one and five, and it's pretty self-explanatory as to why it's more effective, but if you can imagine how a turbine works, if you send steam through it and you're sending steam through you know, a turbine that is one foot so it's going one foot through uh compared to going through one that is five feet you're going to get a lot more if you're sending it all the way through five feet it's going to be a lot more effective um you know it's not going to be the same all the way through during like as it would in the first foot but you're still going to get more out of it because uh you know you're sending it through a longer distance in the actual turbine so the main goal is to extend the turbine as far as possible so that you get the most out of the steam you're putting in because when we start setting up the actual reactor for this that is where we're going to be getting the steam we're going to be using a heat exchanger with a steam boiler and that's going to be the main goal is to use the steam as effectively as possible so the rest of this stuff over here is just going to be kind of miscellaneous things we have a bedrock shaft and a dynam a dynamometer um, which we're gonna hook up to the end of this turbine just so that we can eventually see how much power we're getting out of it we're not going to generate any power today we're gonna get the setup done um, and the last thing we can do relating to that is just craft uh, these steam lines right here so this is what we're gonna be using to move the steam it's the equivalent of a liquid pipe or a lubricant hose or something uh, you do get a lot less for crafting you get a lot of liquid pipes and lubricant hoses for this you only get three uh, not sure how many we're actually going to need, but I'm making three now just so that I can show you guys how to craft it and where we're going to want to hook it up. So the next thing we can do is grab all of this stuff. Um, not actually that expensive to make, but we're going to be making a couple different things right now. So one thing that we're going to make is called a pressurizer. Well, if I can spell that. Okay, so this is the pressurizer. Uh, what this is going to do is take our... I believe it's the low pressure water and it's going to make it so that we can send it back through the system. 
So we can craft this right now. We're only going to be making one of these. And we can actually come over here and take a look. All this stuff is under the power generation tab. We can go to pressurizer. And the pressurizer uh, repressurizes the low pressure water or ammonia so that it can be reused in the reactor, thus completing the thermodynamic cycle. Uh, note that this is a centrifugal compressor. Uh, that's just kind of miscellaneous information. Um, we're not actually going to be powering this today. I'm going to power it off camera. Uh, we should be able to just use a regular uh, steam engine for this. So that's why I'm doing it off camera. But essentially, when we take the steam, we're going to be putting it through a condenser. And that is what's going to leave us with the low pressure water. And then we're going to want to turn the low pressure water back into regular water so it can be sent back through the steam boiler, become steam again, and just make a whole loop cycle in there. So um, just in case you were wondering why you don't just, oh, get rid of it and then just pump fresh water from, you know, the pump that you're going to be using for the steam engine. That is why. Uh, and then we're going to be making two condensers, which we can take a look at right now too, which is the condenser will recollect steam blocks and convert it back into liquid for reuse in the nuclear reactor because the pressure is extremely low. It must be repressurized. And while it may not be terribly economical to reclaim water-based steam, ammonia is sufficiently expensive that recl reclamation is well worth the cost. So that kind of covers the idea that I was just talking about there. And this one is just going to be collecting it and then out putting it out the top. Um, this is going to go on one side of the um, turbine and then the uh, steam is going to be put in on the other side. It's going to flow through and we're going to catch it. Now, it is very important that you catch all the steam. I'm not sure if this has been fixed, um, but from what I have seen uh, in previous videos, comments, bug reports, uh, you do not want to be releasing this steam into the air. You, you want to prevent it from going into the air as much as possible. So you send it through the reactor and then you want to catch it and you want to get it back into water. And that is because uh, it was the cause of a lot of bug reports. And if you if you release it into the air, you're going to get lag from it. And it's also possibly going to cause some serious issues. So uh, I've seen these reports. They were pretty old. So I don't know if that's still a thing. But just to be on the safe side, we're going to want to make sure that we catch as much steam as possible with the condensers. And we'll talk about how we're going to do that a little bit later. But we can come over. We're going to be making two of these. So we can grab both of those. And lastly, we're going to be working with the steam boiler and steam grate. So these are relatively self-explanatory. We can look at uh, them in the book later, but essentially the steam boiler is going to be getting heat from the reactor that we're going to make next episode uh, in the heat exchanger, and it's going to turn water into steam. So we're going to pump the water that we're getting um, from the condensers and the pressurizer back into the steam boiler. It's going to get steam and then or it's going to create steam and then it's going to put that into the steam line, which is then going to go to the steam grate, which we're going to make now. Now, this steam grate is going to be going at the front end of this turbine. It's going to uh, go perpendicular to the way the turbine is facing. So it's going to send steam up and then it's going to go horizontally through the turbine. And that is what's going to generate the power. So that should be it for today. Just make sure we have everything and then we can head downstairs and start working. So if you guys do remember, we did a reactor craft episode before. That is what all of this stuff here is for. If you didn't see that, that was just pretty much getting some enriched uranium dust, um, processing this whole setup. So eventually we will be messing around a little bit more with this, but I've just been, you know, leaving this running while I've been gone, occasionally coming down here, working with it, putting in some more stuff, but uh, we are going to be using this huge open area over here today and this area is a lot larger than the normal side area to the rooms um, because the reactor can get relatively big uh, these turbines start out small but they get big so uh, just be warned you are going to want a seven by seven by five area to be clear for these turbines if you're doing um, the full five length but uh, you are going to probably want a lot more room than that just for when you're actually setting up the things around it so right now I have this block placed here. This is, it should be in the center of this room. Yeah, so this should be in the center for now. I believe it's nine, it should be nine by seven, but uh, we're gonna be placing it one off the wall just because we are going to need to get in there for stuff. So we're gonna place down one turbine and you can see it's got a tank which is empty. We are going to have to go get lubricant for these. They do have relatively large internal buffers for the lubricant. So we're gonna be bringing multiple reservoirs down here and eventually I'm gonna to wanna to pipe it in there directly. Um, but we're gonna put one down and you can see it's relatively small. You're probably thinking there's no way that this is gonna use up a seven by seven by five area even if you extend it. Well, if you put another one down, 
if we go back here and put another one down you can see it progressively gets larger uh, so it's just gonna keep getting larger as you go so we're gonna put all of these down and oh I have to break that torch there okay so there we go so even torches do you know mess with it so I'm gonna put this one down here but this is the turbine so that's the finished size of it uh, it does get relatively large and while these are spinning you are not going to want to walk near them uh, you will break them you'll damage them uh, and then what you're gonna have to do is unlike other things that get damaged like a solar mirror you can't just click on it and fix it it's not like the uh, gas engine you can't you know click on it with something fix it and then you're all good you're actually gonna have to break the damaged one and then it's gonna drop broken parts uh, some of them that you use to craft it and you're gonna have to you know pretty much just craft it again and obviously add more parts to it so uh, because these are expensive you're probably gonna want to keep it in an enclosed area uh, specifically enclosed from the outside world so you know you don't have zombies and stuff walking into it but you're also probably gonna want to make sure you're not gonna be walking into it either so fence posts anything like that around it or just be intelligent you know I don't trust myself at all to not walk into something like this so I am eventually going to put something around it but just you know a fair warning when it is spinning you're not gonna want to go in there uh, at all so now that we have that down we can start setting the things up around it so the steam grate is going to go right at the front like I mentioned before so I'm gonna break this right here just because I was using that to keep it one off the wall this is where we're gonna be inputting the lubricant but we're gonna come below it right here and this is where we are going to want to put the steam grate so we're gonna put it right there uh, it does look relatively cool and when it releases the steam it's pretty much gonna be like it's releasing a block so it's gonna be kind of like uh, slightly transparent it's gonna be an opaque block that is going to flow upwards and it's going to get caught in this turbine and then it's going to go this direction and make it spin so that's the whole perpendicular uh you know 90 degree angle and then it gets caught in there and goes horizontally so what we're going to be doing then is pumping uh the steam into this steam grate which is obviously going to be what's releasing it now the one thing i want to take a look at is if this mentions uh, so the steam output is at the top max output one block per tick so 20 blocks per second i was only curious if it depends where you put the steam in here uh, but because it doesn't specify i assume that we could just put a steam line right in here at the side Ooh, fluorite that's great that's totally something i need right now i'm gonna ignore that for the time being just because i don't feel like getting fluorite right now uh, but so we'd pump the steam in here now because there's not a ton of room over here chances are what I will do is take a steam line and I'm gonna wire it back around that side and then we'll generate all the steam over there when I expand this area so now that we've got the steam going in there we need to catch the steam and turn it into water which will then go to the steam boiler now keep in mind the steam boiler is what's gonna get hooked up to the steam line uh, and it pretty much would just get hooked up so that it is coming out the top so this would take water in the bottom it would get heat from a block adjacent to it and then it would pump the steam at the top so crafting this was actually kind of you know useless today because we're not actually going to be using it uh, and i don't know where exactly i'm going to want to set it up so we're not going to use that specifically today uh, that's actually going to go in next episode but now what we can do is start setting up the things back here which get a little bit more complicated in terms of placement so we're going to want to place down the uh did i grab i did grab the bedrock shaft so the bedrock shaft is going to go right there and then we can place down the dynamometer right there so this isn't super important that you do this uh, obviously you're going to want a shaft to get it out but i just have the dynamometer so that when we are working with this we can actually see what's going on in terms of how much power we're getting because tomorrow's or the next video's uh setup is going to get us a lot more power than you'd think significantly larger uh, amount of power than you'd think compared to anything we've worked with before so it's going to be pretty awesome but this is pretty much just going to be getting the power out of here now uh we're going to be putting down the condensers right near the bedrock shaft and the reason is because like i mentioned before you're going to want to catch the steam as soon as you can and make it back into water um so from what i've seen uh you can place it right next to this bedrock shaft on this side right here or on this side right here but i think it's more effective to put it up one so what we're going to want to do is go here and then i think we want to put the condensers down here and here um you can make it work by putting them down right here and right here so one block lower on each side but i do believe it misses a little bit of steam 
So just to be sure, we'll put it up there. Uh, and I can always move it if when we come next episode, I've you know looked into it and it needs to be moved down. Uh, I haven't done much testing in terms of this yet. Uh, we're gonna go not trial and error, but if something goes wrong when I you know plug this whole system in next episode, uh, you know we'll know. Do not worry, we will know, and we'll have to fix it. But if we look at these, we'll go into the power gen, and then we will go into the condensers and flip over. It's just gonna output out the top. So. What we're going to want to do is pretty much just put the liquid pipe across the top and then we can bring it down. So I think the best way to bring it down would just be over here. So we can go like this and pull it down here. So now we're going to be uh, putting it into the pressurizer right away just as soon as we can because there's really no point in keeping it uh, as the low pressure. Um, and the main idea is going to be to put the pressurizer here and then probably just have a steam engine powering this and have the whole setup for the steam engine behind this wall somewhere because it does actually take up a good amount of space for a single steam engine as we've seen in the past. But the pressurizer is pretty much going to take the liquid input on the top so the setup is great and the liquid output out the side. Uh, power input is in the bottom so we're just going to have to bevel gear this eventually. So to actually hide it I will do like this and then we can just pump it out there. So the low pressure water will go in the top and then the regular water will come out the side and then we'll expand the room this direction and we should be good to go. So yeah, like I said, I'll get the power set up for this later because um, it's really not important. You guys have seen me set up steam engines tons of times. I'd hope you're good enough at it now that you can do it on your own. Um, but now what we're going to do is grab some lubricant so I can show you guys the internal buffer on these and then we should be relatively good to go. So right here, this reservoir is completely full, and this system has been running uh, pretty much non-stop. It eventually filled up after, you know, pumping some into the hydrokinetic engines, but, you know, I do my best to keep this system running. We still have almost three stacks of canola seeds extra, and then another stack, probably a stack of husks and a regular stack in the grinder. But what we can do is grab out a lubricant hose and put that on the front right here. Where does it go? Right there and then grab the reservoir and put it right there. And you can see this thing gets absolutely drained. So this is as drained as you're gonna get it. And if you come over here, you can see that these each have an internal storage of 64 buckets. So each of these is gonna be one reservoir. So we need to bring five trips down here just to fill this up. And this thing is gonna eat through our lubricant. So I am going to want to expand the um, grinder setup and probably you know automate the canola seed farm again and then do all this and that'll probably end up happening on this side of the wall and then we're going to pump lubricant over into this thing for when it's running uh, but if you're curious as to why you know you might have set this whole thing up and it's not spinning be sure to check the tanks to make sure that they do have lubricant in there and uh, you know that that and having a block that's obstructing this whole thing would be the two biggest causes of it not actually working. Uh, that and not having a consistent flow of steam, which we're going to discuss next episode. But I think that's going to be it for today, guys. Uh, pretty much got through everything I wanted to except the steam boiler. So next episode, what you can expect is we are going to be setting up an actual reactor, which we are going to then um, use a heat exchanger to pretty much get steam, which is then going to go through this setup right here and get us a ton of power. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. Uh, if you found it entertaining or informative in any way, please feel free to give it a like as it does help me out a lot. And I will talk to you guys later.